What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Hope you're having a great week. Today I'm going to be going over what happened exactly when I last took out my kayak with the two-stroke engine attached to the side of it and what changes I want to make to the setup. But when I first got on the kayak and turned the motor on and I was so excited to throttle it, I actually did it immediately as soon as I turned it on and the kayak automatically wanted to shift to the right, which makes sense if you really think about it, since I put the motor right in the middle of the left side of the kayak. Uh, so the prop pushes the left side forward and nothing's pushing the right side forward. Uh, so my fiance actually warned me about that prior to me testing it out. I'm just stubborn and I should have thought it through a little better, uh, but it seemed like it was a common thing to mount a trolling motor to the side of your kayak. So I didn't, I figured why not give it a try. Um, so I learned something from that. Uh, the other thing is the engine is actually mounted like a foot and a half above the actual kayak surface. So it's like pretty close to my head. So that's a lot of weight pretty high up. So if you're turning left and right really sharply, it seems very unstable. So one of the first things I'm gonna do, which I'm actually gonna do right now, is shorten my outboard motor by a foot to lower the top of the motor closer to the kayak. Once I figure out how to shorten my motor and lower the center of gravity, I'm actually gonna reposition my um, outboard to be mounted at the very back center of the kayak. So it's got equal thrust when I turn left and right. So we got some figuring out to do, but Let's get started. So this is still the same Saiken 52cc two-stroke engine outboard that I've been using for the rental fishing boat from my local lake and my Intex inflatable project and this kayak. I actually took this apart a couple days ago and I've been staring at it just to figure out how everything works exactly. So the motor, pretty simple. I've taken this thing apart before to replace the clutch. It's just these four Allen bolts to take it off of the head and then loosen these two Allen bolts and the top portion will slide off the top of the main tube. Um, and then this is actually the drive shaft that uh, connects to the bottom of the head. See the splines in there? It's the same kind of splines at the bottom which connects to the inside of the lower unit, uh, which then it's like a differential for a car. It's a 90 degree differential is all it is. So when you crank on the throttle and raise the RPMs of the engine, the clutch locks up and spins the drive shaft, which then the, spins the lower unit and spins the prop. The prop just comes off if you take this cotter pin off and it's locked in place by this dowel that goes through this shaft over here. And then for steering, it's pretty obvious how it works. This just clamps onto the main tube, and then you turn this handle with a throttle on it. And then this main tube was the ma my main concern because I didn't know how I'm gonna shorten the whole thing because I was very intimidated with what may be inside of this, but it's actually much simpler than you think. So, if you notice how it's mounted, this is obviously lined up with this. There's still some RTV there from the factory. You'll notice that there's these shiny marks in here on the, sh the drive shaft. I don't know if you can see that with the lights, but there's the um, markings over here. There's the third set right there. There's a three sets of, I guess what it's called, a drive shaft bushing, support bushing. You can see that in there. Uh, that All that does is support the drive shaft and keeps it centered inside throughout the whole main tube. What I'm gonna do is, I think I'm actually gonna cut a foot off of this, the main tube, and a foot off of the drive shaft uh, to lower the engine closer to the mounting point. Cutting this tube is no brainer because I'm just gonna measure exactly a foot, cut it, but the drive shaft, you can't just cut a foot off of it because it's spline driven. I would have to get this spline portion 
cut off and re-welded down here to keep the top portion locked with the lower unit. But I'm not gonna spend that kind of time or money on this project, otherwise I would just buy another outboard. What I'm actually thinking of doing today is cutting this right here, then cutting a foot off, cutting again right here, and then rejoining the top portion with the rest of the drive shaft with this lock collar. This is simply a 5 16 inch drive shaft coupler by Climax. Um, it essentially just slides onto the drive shaft. Tolerances are so tight that I have no doubt that it's gonna stay true, perfectly straight, because it's super hard to just slide this onto this. So it's not like you can put it in crooked at all. And then when you've got it in place where you want it, two piece, the two pieces, you just lock these two Allen screws and that would keep it locked in place. But another thing to keep in mind as far as where to cut off a portion of the drive shaft and a portion of this is where those bushings are. Because uh, I don't want to lose two of them or have this make contact with the drive shaft bushing. So I see that one is about right here. So I'm most likely going to cut between this area and this area as far as the drive shaft. In that case, I'm only losing one out of the three drive shaft couplers, but I'm also losing a foot of drive shaft. So it should have the same amount of support, but there's only one way to find out if this is actually gonna work. So let's get started. So I decided to cut only 11 inches off the center of the shaft. Notice that the um, drive shaft coupler markings on the lower portion of the tube are right here. I just wanted to make sure there's enough distance between the coupler and the bushing. So what the hell is one inch? And then I flattened a section of both of the shafts, the upper portion and the lower portion. So when I lock it later, this allen screw it locks against the flat portion so there's no chance of it spinning in place it probably would have been okay without me doing that but i just want to play it safe make sure i don't lose any sort of power from slippage when you slide the first shaft into the coupler make sure it's about halfway in and um, you have the allen lock right on the flat spot and then tighten it then reinstall the other portion of the shaft. Seems straight to me. Here's what the shaft and the main tube look like. I just gotta clean up the edges on the top side. I'm hoping that I left enough room in the middle for the mounting components. We'll find out, I guess. And then the drive shaft, when I put it through, it still moves pretty freely. I may need a little bit of lubrication on the inside of the coupler. And I'm actually gonna take this out so I can show you guys what that, uh, the drive shaft support bearing or bushing looks like in there. So I'm gonna knock it out with this since we're not gonna use this anymore, just so we know what's in there. Here you go. So you guys know I'm not crazy. It's just like rubber bushings in there with a sleeve to keep the uh, drive line supported throughout the whole main tube. So that's all it is. There's three of them inside the tube. So just cut a portion off, try to miss that. And this thing can actually move around if you just knock it up and down. So it's really not a big deal if you get close to it. I'm gonna start reinstalling everything. I'm gonna put the main tube into the lower unit first. Since the original company used like RTV to seal things in place to make sure water doesn't get into the lower unit. I'm gonna be redoing that with some new RTV that's gear oil specific since that's what we have in there.
here's how it looks. I'm glad I only cut 11 inches off because there was absolutely no more wiggle room, maybe like a quarter inch left. So I got kind of lucky today. And just so you guys know it works. It works, or it should. We haven't fired it up yet. And as far as steering goes, I don't really think I want to use any of this stuff anymore because I don't really want to reach too far back while I'm on the kayak. But I'm trying to get rid of as much weight as possible. Actually, I think I know what I'm going to do as far as steering. I reinstalled this portion of the, uh, the handle. And I'm actually going to screw an attachment into the threaded portion here. And then hook that up to a linkage system that I can reach from my seat that works off a cable that goes in and out. So it'll just turn left and right as I pull or push on it. So kind of like my razor project, I'm gonna take this off and scuff it up and I'm actually gonna refinish it so it looks a lot more sleek with a satin black finish. And with these Chinese made outboards, it's always a good idea to periodically check all the bolts just to make sure that everything's still tight. All right, so now that I've successfully shortened the outboard to lower the weight of the motor closer down, uh, that should make things a lot more stable. Now it's just a matter of figuring out how I'm gonna permanently mount it to the back of the kayak, which should be the next video. I think I'm gonna start by modifying that Bass Pro Shops uh, trolling motor mount that I previously used. I'm gonna chop it up and potentially make like a tripod for the back of the kayak. And I'm also going to look into some steering options um, out there. I saw some John Boat linkage systems that I might be able to rig up. I just don't want anything that adds too much weight to the kayak. But if you found today's video to be helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you want to keep up with my kayak with a two stroke outboard project or any of my other projects, consider subscribing to my channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.